This episode of Ticket Volume is brought to you by us, Invigate. Get service operations under control in no time. Get one free month of our software solution by going to try.invigate.com. Ticket Volume is proud to present two of the leading female voices in the IT service management industry. Both have been nominated for Women in Tech Excellence Awards and the Tech Women 100 Awards. First, we have Lucy Grimwade, Senior Service Designer, Service Transition, and Service Delivery Management Consultant for Light Spark Group. Her experience spans multiple businesses and multiple industries, including banking, retail, and telco. She has led cross-functional and international teams and is involved in various thought leadership projects, such as uh, podcasts and panels, including this one, and including her LinkedIn Live and YouTube Careers and Coffee. She also works in IT leadership, career, and team coaching. She is currently finishing her co-authored book with Mr. David Barrow on allyship. And Lucy is joined by Sophie Hussey, Director of Lapis Consulting Services, where she is an ITSM and leadership consultant as well as a mentor. She has over 20 years of experience in the IT industry, and she's also worked in different roles, ranging from support analyst and service desk team leader to the head of service management at companies like Lewis Group and Lowell. She's also received recognition as a top 10 thought leader for IT leadership, and she writes for several publications like the International Institute for Learning in New York. Welcome to Ticket Volume, where good service is good business. We share news and information for improving IT experiences. I am your lucky host, Matt Barron, and I get to chat with different humans to share their insights and perspectives on service management, technology, business, the world, culture, and this episode is going to be more of that gold. So I also hope that you'll leave a comment, connect with us, or share our podcast with someone. Send me a note. Tell me that you listened to this intro. Please, people, I need to know that you're actually listening. But for now, let's begin. Welcome to Ticket Volume, Lucy and Sophie. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for having us. It's Great to be back on the show. It's my pleasure to host you. Yes, Sophie, is a, this is your second time on Ticket Volume. You, yeah. you are in a very small contingent of guests. There's probably only, I think, six or seven people who have been on multiple times. So congratulations. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Brush your Thank shoulders you. off, as, yeah. as it were. And I'm so excited, actually, to, to, to be able to share this news with our industry, because I think that you two are working on something. You've got a new venture going on. So I want you to tell me about it. What, what have you two been working on? Oh, Sophie, do you want me to start? Yeah, you go for it. So Sophie and I have come together and we are launching a brand new platform, membership, community that's for women who are working in IT service management. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> yep. That is what we're doing. Okay. Super exciting. Yes. Cannot wait. So many reasons why we've got to this point. But um, Lucy is the perfect co-founder and dead excited. Okay. So uh, you're, you're starting a new thing, but you're not you're not dissolving Lapis Consulting. You're not getting rid of the, the Spark Group. It's, it's a new venture, a new... Is it like an association for women in ITSM? Yeah, basically, we're both still independent consultants. We're still doing our own thing and working with clients in our own right. But together, we are joining forces to create this this community, this this space for women in service management. Um, and there's so many exciting things. I mean, it may there may be further things where Lucy and I do collaboration from this this new beast that we're creating, but. Um, for that, you'll have to watch this space. We'll see how that goes. Well, I'm going to grill you guys with questions now. So <laughs> hopefully I get some of my <laughs> questions answered. And right away, I'm already I'm already getting FOMO. I've already got the fear of missing out. <laughs> can can men join? That's like the first question on my, my, on my brain. <laughs> we are up for allies, 100%. Um, okay. it's, it's, the, the whole purpose of it is, is not to exclude anybody. It's to create 
a space for women specifically based on a whole variety of reasons, which I'll just jump in and I'll tell you part of my reason. Bring it, bring it. So I've been a woman in tech. I've been working in tech since I was 21. Um, I have dealt with misogyny, sexism, discrimination, harassment. I've been stalked. I've had all sorts of crap happen in the last 24 years. Um, and there are so many situations where I'm in a room and the men get listened to and I don't. And I've had to learn how to assert myself without coming across as the um, or whatever other kind of bossy kind of label that goes with that so that I can progress and also be comfortable that I'm being true to my values. Um, and the things that I've learned in the last 25 years, 24 years, um, I want to give back. I want to support other women coming up into service mm -hmm. management. I want to help other people develop and grow. I want other people to find their voice. So in those rooms where they're scared to, or have historically been scared to say, actually, no, I don't agree with you. They'd be like, if you just let me finish, let me explain. And it, it's stuff like that. And I think certainly from, from my experience, the last couple of years working as a consultant, I see the same people getting repeat business over and over again. And they are typically white men and mm -hmm. all power to you, chaps. Absolutely. But I want to give you a run for your money. And oh, I want yeah. to empower other women to do exactly the same thing. Um, so yes. that that's, that's like one of the main driving factors for me is to just kind of question the status quo, empower more women, get more allies and actually drive positive change in a world where the patriarchy rules. Ah, oh, that's great. Oh, you, that's like the best elevator pitch I've heard for a business of any kind <laughs> over the last few years, you know, because it was just straight and from the heart. And and it, it's so important, like you said, showing the next generation how to how to avoid the, abu the abuse, how to respond to abuse mm -hmm. and trauma. And, you know, a as someone who struggled with mental illness my entire life, that that is one of those things that you have to get through. You like yep. that is if you're going to be a productive human being and, and just good to your kids and family and friends, you have to work on that. The yeah. stuff that we're that you're overcoming with women of ITSM, it's not necessary. We don't we don't need uh, the the abuse of women, the the subjugation, yep. the the patriarchy. We don't need that part to be successful. Mm -hmm. And so it's really interesting to hear uh, that number one, that that stuff is still happening. And number two, I'm glad that you're working to, to enhance it because that's the same thing that I do with mental illness. You just witness, tell people the stories, give them the tools yes. to deal with it and just, you know, mentor, foster, grow. Hopefully everyone gets better. <laughs> Absolutely. It still really surprises me how much you know, Sophie's experience that she shared there, I basically have the same story as, as Sophie. I've experienced all of the same things, but yet we continue to experience these same things. And even at the events that we've been to this year, this year, 2024, we've had all sorts of things said to us. Are you lost? Are you the PA? Um, I recently was speaking to a recruiter because again, doing contract work speaking to lots of different recruitment agencies, which very fortunate to have some great contacts, but also unfortunate with some other contacts. You know, I got questioned about some of my own experience around, oh, I see that you, you've you done all this stuff, but now you're writing a book and, then, and you're a coach and you're also launching another business. And I was like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, is that a problem? Like, is there a problem there? Is that a problem with having a portfolio career? Like, actually, that makes me a really good candidate, actually, because it shows that I'm versatile. <laughs> it shows that I'm resilient. It shows that I think outside the box. Like, actually, mm -hmm. as a service, someone that does service design and transition, you need somebody like me that can be a little bit more creative, 100%. Oh, just, I thought I'd get on my little soapbox, too. And it really <laughs> just irritates me. And just looping back to um, kind of saying about those events, we were at six, um, this yet and Matt that's where we first or well, where I first met you face to face it was wonderful um somebody said to, to Sophie and I I didn't know that women like you existed and that for me there was like well this is why we've got to do women of ITSM is because yeah. other women like us who want to do well in this industry we want to smash mm -hmm. these glass teeth we just want to get that ladder and just throw that ladder down and be like come along girls come with us because we've got you yes 
And there's so much value in hiring partners that have something to prove, right? Mm -hmm. Ernst & Young, Accenture, McKinsey, the, these huge consulting firms, they do not need more work. They do not need more press. And they certainly do not guarantee success as we once mistakenly thought. There, yeah. there is something about hiring a, a, an independent consultant that not only does your money go further, um, but also you, you're changing someone else's life. They, they will invest in your company as much as you invest in their company. And that, 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 that little bit is why I'm always constantly trying to find more independent consultants and way to ways to raise independent consultants up, give them more more uh, exposure in the industry, more give them more press, give them more attention because I think that there's more value to be had there, um, especially for for people that are just starting along on their ITSM or digital transformation journeys. So. Let's talk about women in ITSM. What is the sweet spot? Who is the prime candidate to join women in ITSM? Well, we've said that it's any person that identifies as female from any stage of your career to come and join us. So whether you're looking to kind of start a career within service management or become like C-suite in that space, we really want to open that door to everyone yeah. Because not enough is done for those, at all of those, especially middle management as well. You know, I think we've all been stuck in that middle management space. We really want to make sure that it's open the door for everyone and have those people, those who perhaps are in director or head of roles, to help those more junior people and create a bit of a mentoring programming internally in our Women of ITSM platform too. Because we want to try and share that knowledge and try and get people to women to get a seat yeah. at the table. <laughs> yeah, 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 because you see, and, and I pay attention to some of these, these groups that are focused on getting people into IT. How do I break into the industry? How do I get mm -hmm. my first IT job? And a lot of times it's flooded with men. There are ton and women, there are women in there too, but what a, what a bonus to have a place that is guaranteed safe from the abuse from from mm -hmm. from being subjected to chauvinism to uh to the patriarchy uh it it just totally makes sense i could see that for lots of different niches so i'm glad that you guys are going to be doing that and i think um, if i could oh, just ahead. add in as well if please, that's okay please. i think one of the things that i'm very passionate about is um future proofing service management i didn't know service management was a, an option when I started on the service desk all of those years ago in 2000. Oh my God, that makes me feel really old. But I didn't know it was an option. <laughs> and I, I didn't even know that I was working in service management until I got my first official service management job. But I've been in the world of ITIL and, and delivering services for years and years and years. What I would like to do with, with what we're doing as women of ITSM is you don't have to be a coder. You don't mm. have to have super tons of technical experience if somebody puts code in front of me, I'm like, no, thank you. No, give me a nice friendly GUI. I'm happy with a GUI. I can do exchange admin until the cows come home. But if numbers and zeros, no, thank you. I don't, I don't, I don't want that. I understand binary. I understand all the theory, but this, this whole suite of service management is that it's another area and there is so many legs to it. It's not just yeah. a case of, I mean, yes, it is the women of ITSM, but as we've all spoken about in various places, Sometimes you drop the IT off service management because service yeah, management right. is applicable beyond just within the technology world. So the future proofing of what we're doing, not only for anybody who identifies as a woman to be part of the community, is to support them, but also keep this going. We've got loads of people who are at the the nice way to say it, at the sunset of their career, who are retiring, who are who are leaving the world of yeah. ITIL and ITSM, um, who were the people that wrote all the books and those brilliant people, who's filling the gap? I mean, mm -hmm. I'm late forties. I can't fill the gap for too long because I would like to retire. So I want to set up the youngsters to to do service management, to progress, and and everything else that goes with it. Um, just making it very clear that 
technology does not mean you have to sit in a dark room with your headset on, not talking to anybody, tip tapping on your keyboard, doing code. A fair play to those people who do, because to me, they're wizards. Um, but there are many options available. And that that's part of it as well. Yes, I just like Lucy about... was talking about how there's you need creativity, especially in like the service design and service transition phase. Yeah. We need that diversity. We need lots of different people. Lucy, what were you going to say? Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I think it's also just about showing showing people coming up into our industry. It's actually quite fun. It's actually quite fun. Excuse me, how I'm going to word this. Quite a sexy job at times as well. I've worked in high and retail most of my career. I've had the absolute pleasure and stress <laughs> of doing certain things within my role, but I've also got to go and work for, an, for amazing brands. I have amazing clothes which I love and my discount and all of those things because that's my hobby I get to like do my job and my hobby like it was just I really think that that's that's something that's missed a lot is that people just think oh I need to go and work for like um a cat Gemini or an Accenture and although there's a need for perhaps some of those companies it not you don't need to go and work in those you can go and work for maybe your favorite brand mm -hmm. yeah yeah exactly uh, and I should just level set. You can say bitch on this podcast. You can say sexy on this podcast. And if you are really brave, you will say sexy bitch on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> um, no, it, I think it, it's totally fantastic that, that, um, that you're going to be, be building this space, uh, for people. My, my question though is, like what, when are, when is it going to happen? What, when are you guys going to be launching this? Well, um, we've picked this date particularly because not necessarily what it signifies in a very large continent, but what it means generally, we have picked the 4th of July for the go live because it's independence day and it's our independence as women in service management, women in it. Um, that's when we're launching. Love it. Love it. As a, as an ex or as a, yeah, I guess from, from the country that broke away from Great Britain, where, where y'all are, uh, that sounds a little ironic, a little coincidental, but I love it. It makes sense. Independence, <laughs> freedom, freedom, freedom. Absolutely. I think it, for, for me, when I think of, um, I mean, I don't know the ins and outs of the history of what happened because I just don't, but, um, for me, when I think of Independence Day and what I see on TV and film and from people I know who live in America, it's a day of celebration. It's a day of empowerment. It's a day of joy, of motivation, of inspiration, all of those things, all of those, regardless of the history of what uh, that day ended up being because of, it's about those other things, those sort of mm -hmm. key words, those, those value add and, and a country that thrived from its independence and all of that sort of stuff. That's, that's why we've picked it all of those sort of positive. I love words. it. Yes, the 4th of July always reminds me to think about freedom. What is freedom? Are we are we actually living in a free society? Because sometimes it doesn't feel like it. So I think it's important to be reflective on that. And, and so when people join women of ITSM, what, what can they expect? Like, what are they going to get out of it? What can they expect to, how will it change their lives? There's a few ways when our members join us. So it's going to be a membership. So you've got a general membership, which is absolutely free, because we also want to make sure that we are so inclusive. We don't want to just be like, you have to now pay. and you're, Because that we understand that not everybody's in that fortunate position. And then we also have a paying membership as well. And they're, they're kind of tiered, which you'd expect, really, wouldn't you, from a membership. But what's included is, and why? I think it's going to benefit, we think it's going to benefit other women, is you get to obviously network with like-minded people, tick, access to a load of resources, so like templates, how-to, we've got a forum, so this is access to all of the free members, so as soon as you sign up, you get a login, log into the platform, and there's a forum, so it's how do I create a MIM template, how do I, you know, all of that stuff that we can then all come together and go, oh, hey, I've got this template from this. Have you tried to do that? And you're going to get a whole wealth of knowledge from a massive group of people. We hope we lots of people join. Um, and we can do all of that. 
those that pay a little bit more and are part of a bigger platform, you've got access to mentoring and coaching. We're going to have a jobs board. There's going to be so much to it that I don't know why it hasn't existed before, to be honest. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just going to throw in a, a couple of others as well. We're, we're yeah. talking about it earlier today. We're going to do a magazine. So there's a newsletter that's going to go out to everybody every week, which is just like a, a, a short, snappy kind of thought provoking sort of topic, whether it's about leadership. I've actually drafted one for a couple of weeks time about menopause, because that's not fun, I can assure you. Um, so there's, but there's going to be behind if, if you're if you're a paid member then there's going to be a magazine where we're going to interview people and it's going to be all this extra stuff and we're also going to do monthly webinars where we're going to ask people <coughs> to um to speak for us for free um and so <laughs> i promote their business but also provide some sort of service and and some value add um so i mean i know there's the um open service community stuff i think maybe that there's something that we could do together there as well just all sorts of bits and pieces on top of all those brilliant things that Lucy said we're going to do. And I don't think it's even going to stop there. I think there's going to be way more. The more the more people we get, the more sort of um, interest we have, um, the more ideas and people who want to contribute, the more this thing is just going to grow and grow. Yes. Yes. And hopefully people start to shift how they think about service management and how, how service management is yes. an industry. Like we want to change that perception so that people understand that service management is just like product management. You just, mm -hmm. you know, you're not printing a widget at the end. You're not, you know, vacuum molding a plastic thing or 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 um, launching a. Well, I guess in service management you are launching a digital service. So hopefully people like hopefully you know of course you'll add value to people's lives and really. I think the the challenging part will be, of course, like not giving the cow away for free, right? Because you're both independent consultants. So when people ask questions, mm -hmm. you know, at what level are you helping people? And at what level are you saying, okay, but you could buy my services or <laughs> something like, is it top of funnel? And then maybe, you know, mid funnel, you're like, okay, but you probably need more help than just this template. So let me come and help you and coach you. Is that kind of, is that kind of on the back burner? Like also a way for, for women that are independent consultants to find work and, and like minds to work with? Yeah, that's exactly why we wanted to create this jobs board as well is to open up those opportunities for those who are independent consultants specifically and help them set up their businesses too because it's not easy it's not easy to go out on your own but also we want to offer because we also want to work with corporate clients as well we want to offer them consultancy days as well so we can show them one how good it service management looks like but also can help mm -hmm. with their culture and help with their you know stuff to do with when they're doing their recruitment process and things like that too so they can get more diversity into their into their organizations so that's something that we're going to work and build towards as well it seems like a lot doesn't it i feel like the more people we get the more the more we can do and deliver yeah yeah we, we've seen the same thing in open service community the more people we have the uh, the more job postings get shared uh between people um, the more templates, the more diverse responses you get, because mm -hmm. one consultant providing their perspective on incident and problem and what's the difference between those two is useful. Um, it's really nice to have multiple perspectives and and get that out of it. I can already tell, like already I'm like, OK, how are we going to connect open service community with women of ITSM? Because I'm posting all these jobs on there and I. I I'm so glad that you put that you said specifically that there will be a job board because that is something that has clearly been missing in our industry for the last 20 years. Like there was never a de facto place to go to find service management jobs, even even like support and service jobs, a, a very yep, yep. small subset of what service management is. And there's no de facto job board for it. So I hope that you all can kind of be that. That would be great. Definitely hope so. I know from um, looking for contracts recently, um, when you search service management, it brings up all sorts of interesting, not service management roles. <laughs> Doesn't it, John? Not even... <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 I don't have a truck driver's license, but thank you. Thank you for bringing that back. I, I did select technology in that search, but okay, cool beans. Um, yeah, I, I think there's, there's so much value add. 
there as well. And because of because of the nature of the beast of the, the work Lucy and I do, we've built up quite a good con- uh, list of contacts in the recruitment industry as well. Yeah. So um, I'm just I'm, I'm kind of planning ideas there now as we're talking about how we can get them involved as well. Yes. Okay. So let's peek behind the curtains a little bit because you both are independent consultants. You've been running your own businesses for a while. What's it like working together as a team? Oh, it's been absolutely wonderful working with Sophie. Before I had met somebody like Sophie and even David Barrow as well, I actually felt like service management wasn't for me anymore. Like I genuinely felt, and this was only a couple of years ago, I was like, do you know what? I don't feel like this is for me. I don't feel like I'm getting anywhere with it. And it wasn't until I met people like Sophie who was like, what would you mean? You don't need to be technical. Who's been telling you you need to be technical? And the support she had given me over the kind of the last year when I was building out my consulting business to the moment where we are now, it's just an absolute pleasure. And we were doing some stuff earlier and I was like, oh, I've just done this. And it's so easy because anything that we like, we both like the same thing, but when we challenge each other too, it's not like, a, oh, I've got to challenge Sophie on this now. It's like, nah, Vito, don't like that. And it's fine. We just move on from it. So to be honest, it's just worked out really well. <laughs> Okay, Sophie, now's your chance to throw Lucy under the bus. Go ahead. Yeah, please do. Well, so in in my career, I spent a lot of time being the only girl. Um, And I'm not somebody who's ever had a tribe. And so um, I had some interesting times at school. Um, Didn't have a massive sort of group of girlfriends that, according to TV and film, I'm supposed to have. Um, and each time I think I've got like a really good group of friends, something happens and it all just goes to pop. And then um, Lucy and I met, I can't even remember how it happened. And I'm just like, this person, it's really cool. She's really funny. And she calls me out on my BS if I say something stupid, quite like that. Um, and then I don't feel alone. And that that sounds, that sounds a bit sort of, I don't know what it sounds like, but um, Mental health is is a a real thing and I've spent so long being by myself and fighting by myself to try and get my seat at the table. I don't feel alone anymore. And like Lucy and I have all sorts of funny conversations on WhatsApp. Um, We we had a whole thing like, what what are you wearing to the podcast? And Lucy showed me and I'm like, oh gosh, I better get changed. And just (laughs) all of those silly conversations because she, she gives me a safe space for my personality to just come out because I'm so, so passionate about being authentically me. Um, and sometimes I worry that people don't get it. But when I'm geeking out about Star Wars or whatever else, Lucy just laughs and joins in with me. It's, it's, it's wonderful. And I think, like like she was saying, we were working on something earlier on today. And she sent me a load of images like, let me know which ones you like. And I'm like, thumbs down, thumbs down. Oh, heart, thumbs down, thumbs down. And she just responded with like, we like the same things. This is so easy. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 just really good. I just I feel at home and comfortable. Mm. Um, I mean, Lucy and I actually met for the first time in person at SITS in April, and we shared a hotel room. I mean, nice. It it was just super comfy, and I'm normally really really shy, but I I, I didn't I didn't feel that at all. I just felt at ease, and we had a right deal. Isn't we it did. Nice. I think you it's just meet so... some, when you meet someone, don't you? Like sometimes you just click, and I think it's a very rare, especially as an adult. When was the last time mm. as an adult you met someone and you were like, "You're my person. Don't ever leave me." <laughs> you know, you don't <laughs> and like friendships, right? So yeah, I think that. Thank you for sharing that, Sophie. That means that means the world to me. So thank you for saying what you said. That is lovely. It is so lovely, and you're right. When you become. <laughs> Once, once you pass the magical ages of 30s and you're after that, it, you're right. It's it's hard to find people that you just click with. Uh, it, you know, it, when it happens, you're like, whoa, OK, what's your phone number? <laughs> How can I text you? Let's uh, let's exchange snaps uh, so we can stay in touch with each other. If that's what you're doing, snaps. Uh, but I, I really love that you both said something very like very specific about what you needed, right? Sophie needed a team. She didn't even know it, but she's feeling the love of a team. And and Lucy, I have felt that exact same way about service management. What the hell am I doing? I'm not changing the world. I can use my energy in different ways that will impact the world more positively. And then you come back to it and you realize, I am having an impact. 
I'm making a thousand people's jobs better or easier or or more lovely. Um, so I'm so glad that you two have found each other. And if you're looking for those things, it's clear that this is the community to look at, right? Women of ITSM. It's starting because these people have these challenges. And if you have these challenges too, you should consider uh, joining. And with that, I would love if you two could share how can people stay in touch? How can people learn more? Uh, where should people get in touch with you? I think the best place to start with is on our LinkedIn's. Um, we've got our newsletter and then our website next month will be launched and it's womenofitsm.com um, as of 4th of July, then you'll find it. Yeah. Definitely LinkedIn. You can. We're on Substack, so you can register your interest now. So you'll automatically get the newsletter, and that will keep going even after we go live. Um, and where else? I mean, just link. I think LinkedIn is probably the best place for right now, up until the launch. Um, and then there'll be other channels as we we figure it out because we, we've also sort of floated a few sort of community chat tooling ideas, and we haven't decided exactly which one. Um, so LinkedIn, if you need something for okay. now, and then then it's going to explode. It's going to be massive. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so hard to piece together the the technology that runs these communities. But I will say that when I searched for women women of ITSM, I found that LinkedIn page very quickly. So yes, yeah. just search for women of ITSM. You'll find it. You'll get what you need. Lucy and Sophie, thank you so much for being here and sharing this great information and for your dedication to the community. This is not a small bit of work and it's a huge commitment um, you know, for a long duration. So I congratulate you and thank you for your time and energy um, given back to our community. Thank you for having us. My pleasure. And for our audience, thank you for turning up the ticket volume. We've got some great episodes coming up, so please register to get alerts for new episodes at invigate.com slash ticket dash volume or ticketvolume.com to also get a free map of IT tools to enhance your IT support offering. The link is in the description. Thank you for listening to Ticket Volume. You can change and improve this podcast by DMing me, leaving a comment, or complaining on the internet because that's how it works. And speaking of ticket volume, did you know that this podcast is brought to you by Invigate? It's a fit for purpose service desk solution with integrated asset management designed to let you focus on supporting your organization without arduous implementations and teams of 20 admins. In fact, IT teams from Toyota, NASA, and McDonald's use Invigate to manage requests, automate workflows, and centralize inventory data so that they can focus on delivering better service because good service is good business.